so thank you everyone for attending our Q3 update, uh, earnings and operational update. Um, uh, today we're uh, from Mongolia. We have our Jeremy South, our SVP and CFO, and, and Bata Tumar Osher, our, our CEO and president, also joining. Uh, so please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them on the on the chat. Um, and it'd be nice to, to we'll, we'll be happy to answer any and all questions that uh, that we can on this and and. Uh, we would like to spend a lot of time on Q and A on this, on this update. Uh, for those of you who are new to the story of Step Bull, well, let's give a quick brief overview before handing it over to uh, Bata uh, to give an update. Uh, Step Bull listed on the TSX, the main board of TSX, um, listed in 2018 as the only main board mining IPO listing in 2018, raising $25 million. Uh, in the last two years, um, we actually built our first mine. Uh, our mine is in commercial production today, and and we've just announced our our second quarter of of production numbers and in, in, in profitability uh, on that phase one oxide mine. So in the last two years, uh, we've built our first mine. We spent time on exploration and infill drilling uh, to uh, put out our resource update, which is on track for later this year, um, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to updating the market on how that, that will play out with the feasibility study just around the corner on our expansion project, going from phase one into phase two, which we'll get into later as well. Um, bottom line is we built our first mine uh, when gold was $1,250. <clears throat> assumed that's what the price would be when we bring it online. Uh, and, and here we are two years later with uh, a built mine, no permitting risk, no CapEx or building risk. And we're now in production and generating cash flow on a quarterly basis. Uh, we're using that cash flow to grow our business, uh, which is building that phase two expansion in the new year uh, while we're completing a revised feasibility study on that phase two expansion. Uh, and last but not least, we have a large exploration license called Budum Hundi. It's a UK license that is in the southwest of the country. It's an undrilled license, never owned uh, or drilled by anyone else uh, that has had uh, drilling all around it uh, and some successful uh, drilling and, and uh, advancement from another company called Erdine Resources, ERD. Uh, so on the back of their million ounces that surround us, uh, we'll get to some drilling hopefully this year. If not, it'll be in uh, later Q1, which is a very exciting project for us. Uh, that could be another mine in the future. Um, with that, uh, Bata, are you, do you have your power um, mic on? But thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> today, I would like to uh, talk, talk through briefly about <clears throat> what step gold has completed completed in the previous 12 months and share our plans for the next 12 months so step gold's near term goal is to become one of the biggest gold producers in mongolia the company is on track to produce 60 60,000 ounces per year and now working towards increase its annual production to 150,000 ounces so over the last 12 months <clears throat> with the covid 19 travel restrictions and borders closed. It was a very challenging year to operate, but it was still a very productive year. And we are very grateful to our partners and shareholders for the support. So in last December, we have fully commissioned the mine and its facilities and received all required approvals to operate the plant. In January, we successfully closed the financing from the government-owned Development Bank of Mongolia. And in March, we have commenced our first gold production and made our first gold sales in May. By July, the company has produced over 15,000 ounces of gold and successfully closed the $15, $15 million strategic private placement from Eric Spot. So during the last uh, summer three months, the company continued its drilling programs and further developed the ATO mine. And just last uh, September, the company has received over 10 million US dollars in project, project financing through the Mongolian government initiated Gold 2 program. <clears throat> so, for STEP operations, so STEP has uh, two operations in Mongolia. One is an ATO gold mine in Eastern Mongolia, and another one is an exploration project in Western Mongolia called Orta Mundi. So about the ATO gold mine, <clears throat> uh, as of today, the ATO gold mine project consists of two phases. Phase number one is the heat leach gold production from oxide zones. And phase number two is the construction of CIL plant. Phase number two of the ATO gold mine is complete 
and in production, and it's estimated to produce 50 to 60,000 ounces per year. And this year, the company is doubling our current reach bed size, and it's now 90% complete. Phase number two is the construction of our CIL plant to extract gold and silver from fresh rocks. So the government of Mongolia has already approved the Mongolian feasibility studies and along with the initial construction permits. The company is now working towards commencing the gold production, uh, sorry, the construction of CIL plant next year. As for resource, currently the ATO mine has 1.2 million gold equivalent uh, Ounces and the company continues its drilling programs to increase our uh, current resource estimates. During this year, the company has drilled over uh, 16,000 meters, meters at the ATO mine and on the Mung Discovery. The company is planning to release our initial resource estimates of Mung Discovery in the first quarter next year. <clears throat> so, besides the ATO gold mine, uh, there is uh, <clears throat> one of the most Mongolia's most exciting and largest exploration project is called Otamundi. We call it UK project. UK project covers over 14,400 hectares in Western Mongolia. And so far the company has completed full geophysical studies, collected over 8,000 samples, identified four highly prospective areas for extensive drilling programs for next year. So we believe next year will be very, really exciting times to see the drilling results on UK project. As for the company, the company was established in, back in 2016 by the company chairman Matthew Wood. And in 2017, the company acquired the ATO and UK projects and success, successfully did an IPO two years ago. So last year, with the latest developments, the Ministry of Mining of Mongolia awarded the Stepgold as the mining company of the year and the investment of the year. Today, Stepgold hires on average about 200 to 300 people. And 50% of the board, 99% of the all employees are Mongolian nationals, and 70% of total workers from the local areas. So, as for social responsibility, the company built a strong local relationship with the local communities. And from the beginning, the company has signed a cooperation agreement with the local authorities, focusing on funding the educational programs for students. The company provides scholarship programs to all the students at the ATO mine community. And so far, the company spent about 1 billion tubrics since, the, since we established, in, uh, since we acquired the project back in 2017. That's in US dollars, about 350 US thousand dollars. As for next year, the main catalysts will be, it's going to be, a, we believe it's going to be a very significant year for Stepco, the year of expansion. We're looking forward to continue our current production and commence CIL and construction. As I said before, we already received initial project financing from the through the Gold 2 program, and <clears throat> we expect <clears throat> interesting drilling results from the UK project next year. And plus, the company continue assessing new projects on the monthly basis. So, I believe the next year will be a really exciting time for us for the year to expand the current step called company. Thank you. Yeah. Daniel? Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Bata. Um, so with that, uh, um, we'll have Jeremy uh, run through the, the updates, uh, press release this morning uh, on our Q3. Uh, results and just talk more about the operation in the news release today. And um, after that, we can go right to the, the Q&A, uh, which I'm, I'm sure there's uh, uh, quite a few questions. Thank you. Jeremy? Thanks, Neil. And uh, I think James has put the uh, the press release up there. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, very exciting to to, um, to to give an update on the, on the third quarter results. Um, Hopefully everyone has had a, everyone's had a chance to at least uh, look at the press release. Um, just some of the highlights. Um, revenue in the quarter was around 19.4 million on 11,352 um, gold ounces and 65.53 silver ounces. 
Uh, we have actually produced additional silver ounces um, in, 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 in finished goods inventory. Um, and we deliver those on, on a on a sort of a roughly quarterly basis. Um, uh, clearly, in in the quarter, helped by uh, by strong strong metal prices, averages of uh, nineteen thirty and twenty four dollars respectively uh, in in the quarter. Um, on, on those um, on that revenue of uh, attributable revenue of nineteen point four million, the company generated operating cash flow from mine operations of around twelve point. 12.7 million, so very strong profitability, very high margin um, uh, operations, uh, uh, which is excellent. Group group adjusted uh, EBITDA for the quarter was around 10 million dollars. Uh, cash costs um, for the for the mine um, ATO 572. I haven't got the exact details, but that that that's probably going to put us in the bottom decile globally um, in terms of in terms of cash cost. Um, Mongolia is a um, we have the benefit of operating in a, in a low cost jurisdiction with respect to availability of, of, um, of labor, of uh, consumables being next to China is a, is a huge advantage for us. And, um, and also obviously the, um, the, uh, the, the mining and the processing itself, we're able to build this mine uh, for under $25 million. And um, that is certainly um, you know, re reflected in, um, in those low cash costs. All in sustaining cost uh, before expensed exploration. Most of the exploration expensed in the quarter was relating to the Mung deposit, uh, which is not partly partly which is not part of the classified resource at this point. Um, so that's non-recurring. Um, so uh, all in sustaining was around seven ninety four. We we expect um, you know, clearly we're in the ramp up phase right now, and we expect um, you know the costs of um, of, of the oxide mine to to settle in around five fifty at the cash cost level and and somewhere around six fifty seven hundred on the on the all in sustaining, um, you know being in a ramp up having come out of a, a period where you know we we were somewhat cash constrained in twenty nineteen you know we had deferred some um, some um, some some expenses that weren't that weren't absolutely essential to get into production and we are now. Uh, fortunately, in the, in the position of being able to um, to to deal with some of those, which has also given rise to some slightly higher um, GNA costs in the quarter. Um, we're very fortunate um, in um, you know, and I think fortunate is the word. Um, it, COVID nineteen obviously has been uh, has been a major issue uh, across the world, and has, has has impacted negatively a number of mining companies. Uh, we've been fortunate. Um, to to um to really have no you know meaningful uh, impact on our operations so far this year, um, but the um, um the Mongolian government has has afforded certain certain businesses um, some tax exemptions and we we're lucky to to benefit from that so that is you know ha has a significant impact on our on our actual cash free cash flow uh, for the 2020 year we will pay full taxes in 2021 forward. Um, we had a, a strong quarter on the mining and, and processing front, around 365,000 uh, tons mined and around 208,000 um, uh, processed um, through, through the crushing plant, an average gold grade of 2.18. And if you looked at that, um, the gold grades in the, um, in the 40 through 101 that Vata was referring to recently, um, the significantly higher um, uh, average gold grades uh, being seen so far, we expect those to even out a little bit, um, but uh, but we've certainly been the beneficiary of of good gold grades, particularly out of the ATO one deposit. Um, work continues on the bankable feasibility study, as Bato referenced for the expansion of the ATO gold mine, um, and um, that that is well underway. I'll talk to that uh, in, in a bit more detail in a second. Um, we are looking at um, updating. Updating the resource for for the ATO gold mine uh, to incorporate um, the Mung deposit, which is a um, discovery that had been, you know, really the centerpiece of of the Centera project. Um, so we're very excited to see how that um, how that comes out in the, in the uh, in the resource update coming forward. Um, and Neil and Butter both referenced the UK project, and you know we're sort of we're underway there um, with some. Um, with some trenching work and hope to have some updates soon. Um, we had a pretty active quarter in, 
in on the financing front, um, obviously the Eric Sprott investment for around 15 million Canadian or 11 million US. Um, great, um, uh, a, a great endorsement of, of the team, the assets, and and the opportunity, and quite frankly, the valuation. Um, uh, we uh, we also converted, um, you know, all of the 2019, the balance of the 2019 uh, debentures, um, and um, so, so that's um, that those are now being converted into into shares. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, remaining convertible to benches uh, held by the Mongolian National Investment Fund, the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Mongolia. The other, obviously, major event in the quarter, which was the uh, the loan from from TDB Mongolia um, for around 10, 10.5. That's the initial tranche of our project finance. We are looking to raise sort of circa 70 million US, um, depending on how the feasibility study comes out. And that's um, that was the sort of the first tranche of that. Um, the um, the, that loan is essentially sort of um, because of the, um, you know, that we don't have an immediate use um, for the cash. The initial um, period of that loan will be um, essentially interest neutral to the company. Um, just um, very importantly um, on, um, on, the, um, on the health and safety front, um, we continue to have a, an early, a, a completely perfect record touching wood here on um, on, on LTIs, um, safety has been really at the cornerstone of, of our of our of our project, and we're pleased to see that continue. Um, we are um, putting a lot of work and, and effort into um, into into the ESG aspects of the project, but to talk to the community, the significant community engagement um, that that has been um, you know been there from the start, and that continues on. Uh, we've also invested heavily in the environmental. Um, the aspects of the, of the project, and and uh, we're fortunate to operate in a in an area that is um, you know free and clear of, of any sort of um, population, um, and um, but you know very very still very much focused on ensuring that we have a you know um, we're responsibly mining and and have the um, have the um, all environmental aspects um, sort of taken care of, uh, and just in terms of COVID. Um, you know, COVID nineteen has obviously impacted mines around the world. Um, we haven't been we haven't been um, spared the impact. Having said that, the Mongolian government essentially closed the border uh, in February of this year. Um, we were able to still get our supplies uh, of reagents um, through the border. Um, we have had some issues getting people in and out of the countries at, from time to time, but we have been able to work through that. Um, uh, the Mongolian government. Um, um, Continues with some some um, some restrictions with a with some some recent spread of COVID nineteen, and we we continue to um, to work with the government in ensuring that uh, has you know as limited an impact on our activities as is as is possible. Just a quick touch on the um, on the balance sheet. Um, we're um, we finished the we finished the quarter in in good health. Um, we um, uh, we have around 37 million US in cash, um, net of the loan. That's TDB around 26 of, of net cash. And if you take off the uh, convertible, pool, 23. Although we look at that really as equity now. Um, yeah, inventories um, obviously um, have have um, continued to rise th um, through the year as we um, as as we moved into production. Uh, the ramp up has gone pretty smoothly, all things considered. Um, obviously, some some bumps and and some costs as we go through, but but by and large, we've been we've been pretty happy. Uh, balance sheet, you know, is is, is looking pretty solid, um, and um, you know um, the uh, the conversion of those to benches um, in the in the quarter um, gives us a, a share count of around seventy million shares, sixty eight point nine million shares. Um, all all of the other um, uh, Instruments in the company share instruments are in the money, except for the um, except for the, the Eric Sprott warrants. So we have, you know, you know, um, obviously um, uh, a slightly higher. Um, I think around 90 million shares outstanding on a on a fully diluted basis. Um, moving to the income statement, again, um, looking at the, uh, the revenue year to date of around 39 million. Um, so quarter three and quarter two, pretty much 
you know, pretty much the same in terms of revenue. Um, we talked about cash cost. Cash cost was down a little bit, um, and you know, operating profit from my operations, um, you know, around twelve point seven, you know, slightly higher than than, than quarter two. Um, we aren't impacted t- t- too much by by realised foreign exchange issues. Um, we don't do any hedging of, of gold. You know, we don't currently do any hedging of currencies, um, but we are you know actively looking with a you know with a strong cash balance, thirty seven million. US, we are actively looking at um, at ways in which um, accelerating and managing our our cash balances. We are we are able to benefit from um, significantly higher interest rates in Mongolia for, for both local currency Mongolian Tobruk and and US dollars. And um, you know, we are very optimistic um, with respect to the um, um, the project finance, not just from a from the point of view that we have a strong project in phase two, but you know, strong cash balance really you know makes a huge difference when negotiating with lenders, and um, there's also a, an increasing appetite um, for dollar dollar asset risk in Mongolia, um, and, and we're um, uh, we're very optimistic of um, you know, of uh, you know the the possibility of of securing some project finance in Mongolia as well. Um, I talked about. Um, Taxation finance cost obviously reflects, you know, some of the derivative impact of the uh, convertible debentures, um, given the significant um, tick up in the share price over over the past uh, over the past nine months. Um, you know, very strong cash flow. I think, as evidenced both by the uh, the cash balance, but also the, you know, the operation cash flows uh, in the quarter. You know, very very happy to, um, you know, to see that cash build up and. And that um, you know, underscores the profitability of the project and um, and our ability to, to operate effectively and um, you know keep a keep a good lid on costs. Moving to um, operations quickly, um, you know I think uh, in, in the quarter uh, we are starting to mine waste. Now you'll see that in the in the in the operational summary. Um, you know, we we did have some um, some crusher issues in the first first quarter, um, which we've now resolved. So we are we are starting to see an uptick in um, in, in crushing, uh, and you'll see that in um, in um, in the um, in the numbers there around two hundred and eight thousand versus one sixty four in quarter two. Um, we haven't really had the ability to make a, a proper assessment on recoveries. Um, but you know, in, in, co- in calculating inventories and cost of sales, etc., we are continuing to use a, a 70% recovery on gold and 40% on silver. Um, the grade reconciliation continues to be very positive, uh, 2.18 versus 1.67, and, and an average of 1.93 across uh, across the year to date. Um, as I mentioned, we do have a significant um, inventory of silver. Um, some of those silver, we do produce silver bars and gold bars. Um, that is um, a decision we, we made early on, um, given the um, given the significant silver content, um, and so we are looking to, to sell silver on a on a sort of a quarterly or or or, um, or longer basis um, versus the um, versus the gold. We sell our gold every two weeks to um, to TDB, uh, the, the largest bank in Mongolia, uh, also our our main lender. Um, just in terms of, of the unit costs, I know people ask the question. Um, the um, mining costs coming in around, we expect mining costs or, or total costs um, per ton around $15, uh, mining around $6, processing between $4 to $6, and GNA anywhere between $2 to $3 um, are, are the sort of expectations there. As I mentioned, um, you know, cash costs we expect to come in around 550 life of mine for the oxide project. Um, we are getting asked about the phase two um, cash, cash costs. Um, we would note the uh, the Odin feasibility study. I think was a, was around 734. Um, you know, we would expect our 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 project to be you know at at or below that, given obviously we have significant infrastructure uh, already already um, already spent in respect of. Our project. We have an operating mine. We have a camp. We have infrastructure. We have roads. We have water, etc. Um, so um, those are just some highlights on operations. 
Um, just in terms of, um, I think Anil talked a bit about um, exploration as well, but uh, just in terms of the outlook, I think, you know, we, we expect to, um, we expect to finish the year in and around 35,000 ounces of gold sales. Um, and so, you know, with, with similar costs uh, to those seen in quarter three, we expect to, uh, you know, to, um, you can probably make the, 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 um, um, make the assumption sort of operating cash flow before, um, before um, depreciate, uh, depreciation and depletion, um, you know, in that sort of 30, 35 to $36 million range, which is a pretty outstanding result, I think, for a, for a ramp up phase. Um, I think um, it's worth commenting that, you know, when we started this project, I think um, we have been criticized sometimes for, for, um, for, for, the, um, for the approach we've taken, which is to, 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 to build that oxide quickly rather than build the whole project. Um, we, always, we always felt the best way to, to operate and, and run this mine was to start with a, you know, start with cash flow, generate cash flow early, build that cash balance up and enable that to, um, you know, to fund the large expansion. And that's, that's really the way this has played out. We've been helped out by the gold price, but I think, I think our approach has been sort of borne out um, as, as, as the right one here. Um, we've been able to, um, to generate good cash flow, and that just gives us a lot more optionality in terms of, in terms of not just operations in phase two, but also, um, you know, uh, corporate development op opportunities. You know, we, um, we've very quickly become the largest gold producer in Mongolia, and, um, and that obviously is a, is a, it plays very well. We're, we're, we're generating royalties and taxes for the Mongolian government and, um, and all our stakeholders, um, you know, want to see, want to see that support. A lot of companies spend lots of time, um, you know, exploring and developing, you know, we got into production early and I think that approach has, has certainly sort of been seen to be the right one. Um, you know, we, we expect to, to, to do, you know, as, as mentioned, between 50 and 60,000 ounces in 2021 and 22, um, um, you know, we expect the run rate of, uh, of gold production to go up as we, you know, actively um, accelerate through the, through the quarter, uh, quarter one, 2021. Um, <clears throat> as mentioned, we have you know, completed um, construction of the final leach pad liners. Um, so we now have a completed uh, leach pad infrastructure we are now stacking on 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 cell two we'll stack into cell three four and five that'll be the uh layer one um we expect to to get to around about four million tons of stacked ore um by the time um you know we completed the um the leach pad um, process so we are looking at sort of increasing to that sort of 1.5 million um tons um tons per annum um Talked a bit about the Bank of Feasibility Study. We have retained um, DRA Global and Basement Laboratories to um, to work on that, and that's uh, that's well underway. Um, um, the, the infill drilling, obviously done in quarter three, um, will will form part of the resource update. Um, we, we do need an upgraded power solution for the fresh rock phase. Um, that will most likely be um, be a be um, be a combination of of um, of, of a grid solution, uh, we are looking actively into a grid solution uh, as well as some redundancy through um, through uh, diesel generators and possibly some renewable options, uh, which are you know renewable energy is quite well developed in Mongolia. Um, we are uh, also working on a, uh, a, a tailings dam study um, with uh, with a leading engineering firm. Um, financing strategies uh, for for the ATO gold mine. Um, as, as mentioned earlier, advancing in parallel with the BFS process, and, and we have retained uh, advisors in that regard, and um, you know underway, uh, underway with that process. So, um, yeah, with that, um, hand it back to to Anil and, and maybe get into some questions. Thanks, Jeremy. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, you know we want to spend as much time as we can on Q and A. Um, I think I saw a lot of questions coming across, and so Jane, if you could uh, assist there, we can start hammering away some, on some of the questions. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking us through the presentation. We did have a lot of questions come in, so let's try to get through as many as we can. Our first question is from Arl. 
Uh, he's asking, how are the ongoing drill programs going at the ATO and the Mangu uh, locations? And what is the exploration target? Who'd like to take that? The current drilling uh, that's ongoing at ATO and Mung, which is, should be wrapping up now by mid-November here, um, it does get cold, is, is really focused on infill drilling uh, to put that maiden resource on Mung. So infill and extensional drilling on Mung, as well as uh, the ATO deposits, ATO 1, 2, and 4. So that's really where our focus has been with our three drill rigs this year uh, and all resources. And uh, as, as mentioned earlier, uh, that will all be all that drilling will be tied into uh, our resource update on all three ATO uh, projects uh, deposits, as well as our maiden resource on the Mungu deposit, uh, which you know, as we mentioned, it should be on track by the end of this year. Or you know, if we miss that mid-December window, then it'll be uh, in the new year, uh, not in not too far future. Uh, we obviously, with the material update, like that want to have a lot of eyes on the story, and and as we run into the December lull. Uh, you know, you might lose a couple of weeks. So I guess we're on track by end of this year or, or very early next year to release that to the market uh, based on the drilling to date. Uh, uh, so we didn't really get a chance this year uh, to focus on any other discovery um, drilling um, at the ATO projects. All our resources really had to go to get to this advancement of the feasibility study and get this maiden resource out on Mung and tighten up ATO 1, 2, and 4 as well. All right, I hope that answers your question, Simon, as well, uh, since the resource update will be uh, approximately end of this year, as Anil said. Um, I did get a few questions here in the Q&A panel asking about the production numbers. Uh, should investors be concerned about the uh, recent production numbers? And uh, even though the cash situation is So you broke up at the end there, Jane. Uh, yep. The question was, uh, there are several questions here asking, uh, should investors be concerned about the uh, production numbers, even though the cash flow situation remains strong? Yeah, I, I think I think production, you know, it's, we're, we're in ramp up phase. So, you know, I think the, the numbers are going to jump around a little bit. Um, you know, we've, um, you know, we've, you know, as you can see from the revenue, we're, we're pretty much, you know, Quarter three, quarter two, almost identical revenue numbers. Obviously, production was down a little bit, but you know we've um, you know we continue to to work through the ramp up phase, and we'll see some I think some more consistency through into 2021, 2022. Um, but you know we we think we'll get to 35,000 ounces by the end of December, which I think is you know is a pretty good start to the to the to the year. Yeah, given the given the situation this year. Um, we are in startup ramp up mode. Uh, everyone knows this uh, as a new mine. It takes quite a few quarters to get to your run rate production and our target of the 50, 60,000 ounces. We're hoping to be a bit more aggressive this year and we just didn't. Uh, as we mentioned, we had the construction, uh, the, uh, the crusher and we've had, we made adjustments and actually purchased another one. Uh, all those are, are, are campaigns that you work through. Uh, in all of that, we're actually still generating cash and building up cash and all you're doing is deferring some of that production into the new year. Um, you're not losing it. Uh, so I think um, uh, that, that's just part of it. Uh, if you look at other new producers out there, you'll see the first three to four quarters are going to be a little volatile in terms of production and costs. And I think that you're seeing that here the same. But uh, our goal hasn't changed uh, on a yearly basis. We want to hit that 50 to 60,000 ounces from the oxides. In fact, we would like to produce as much as we can possibly from the oxides in 2021 in 2022 because that will take as much cash as we can out from the oxides to fund the expansion into uh, 2023 uh, where then you're just now running a CIL plant in flotation circuit and there's no more leach pad, uh, no more additions to the leach pad. Great, thank you. Here's a different question from Arald. He's asking, what's the production target for 2020 and what expansion um, is the impact of uh, construction completed for the leach pad extensions at cells three, four, and five? Well, I, I can take that. I mean, I, as I mentioned, 35,000 ounces is our, is our target. You know, we probably have three more gold pours uh, this year. 
Uh, we're, we're feeling reasonably confident we'll get that. So um, in terms of, um, you know, the, the leach pad construction, you know, as I mentioned, we, we completed construction of cells three, four and five. So, you know, that those cells are lined and ready to go so we can just keep stacking. So we we have uh, really little, very, very little um, residual capex to go in uh, on the oxide zone. Great. Thank you very much. Here's a different question from Harry. He's asking about uh, Eric Sprott being one of the shareholders of both uh, Erdine and Step. Has he discussed combining these uh, both operations with you? Do you see any synergies at all here? Yeah, well, um, obviously, uh, even before Eric was involved, people look at the map of the UK project and see that Erdine's bordering our license so it's a it's a it's a question that's come up all the time if you know does consolidation makes sense uh are there synergies with their dean um the, the bottom line is we haven't even done enough work on our own license it's a fourteen thousand four hundred hectare highly prospective exploration license that we haven't drilled ourselves so it doesn't make any sense uh from a strategic uh perspective to to consolidate if we don't even know we have our own package uh we believe there could be uh, a mine itself on our own on our own on our own uh, license and that's what we're really going to focus on we want to get to drilling on a license it's highly prospective given what Erdine has accomplished and been very successful at uh, so we really want to focus on our own project first and uh, i guess uh, there hasn't been any influence or uh, discussions uh, from uh, eric uh, as being a new investor in both our companies uh, on on that strategy of course We've seen him do that before in other countries and in, in, in jurisdictions, but um, nothing has been brought to our attention. And as, as you can see, our goal is to focus on what we have first. Got it. Thank you, Anil. Uh, let's talk a little bit about COVID. I know uh, Jeremy mentioned this a little bit. Um, there's currently, or there, there's recently been a lockdown in Mongolia. So how are the restrictions gonna impact operations and the supply chain? Basa, did you want to chat about that? Yeah, yeah, make it. Yeah, yeah. So recently we have a lockdown in the UBCT, but uh, uh, thankfully we don't have any issues or any cases, COVID cases in Eastern Mongolia yet, and we don't have anything. And over the last ten months, uh, we had cases only coming uh, from different uh, from outside of Mongolia. So we've been, uh, the uh, government has been doing a really good job. And recently there were like a four to seven cases. And the lockdown is only in the city and the provinces and it's going to continue until December 1st. And hopefully everything will be fine by then. And the full lockdown is only for the people, but we're still uh, able to bring in chemicals, regions and uh mining equipments from china or from russia so transportation of equipments and food and services are fine it's only the travel are for the people so so far it's uh, the operation is going well and fine and on a weekly basis so <clears throat> the main mining companies are actually having a meeting with the inspection agencies and with the ministries and we're updating of the information, sharing the information with the government. And just last week, we also <clears throat> provided the masks and uh, health kit tools to the small uh, local communities. And we're fighting with this uh, with the virus uh, together as, as much as we can. And yeah, hopefully by December 1st, everything will be same as usual. And also with this uh, COVID-19 restrictions, there are a list of 10 items uh, which are able to <clears throat> we use and travel. And one of them is uh, uh, everything uh, related to the mining industries. So anything related to the mining industries can be transported and can be used. So you are able to uh, service and people to use for the mining services. Thank you. Great, it's good to hear that work will still continue. Now, um, 
here's another question asking about, uh, are there other uh, explorations around and outside uh, or just near the ATO and Hmong areas? Um, have you found higher reconciliation grades? On the exploration side, um, I think there's a lot more work to be done. Uh, we haven't had a chance. We haven't had really the time or resources in the last couple of years uh, to get to, to really step out and, and see uh, what, what more discovery opportunities exist on this footprint. I mean, this is a mining license over 5,000 hectares uh, with two exploration licenses also. So um, certainly there's opportunity for more exploration and we just haven't had a time. So that's, that'll be part of our rejig reassessment over the winter to focus on what's next for, for this ATO and Mung project. Um, we've, we have had initial success in expanding the footprint there. ATO4 is now probably almost double the size than originally. So we've had success in reinterpreting the core deposits from uh, Sentara's interpretation and our new, um, including adding Mung into the fold. But um, uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, uh, we've, we can answer that question without doing more work. And so, you know, we're hoping to get back to, you know, using our cash flow to fund some further real exploration. You know, this was taking a project and trying to grow it uh, in, a, in an organized and in, in you know, lower risk manner uh, to get here and get the cash flow online. And now we can focus on some of the exploration potential that exists uh, both on our assets and, and maybe some, some other assets that we don't own today. Um, on the grade reconciliation, so we've seen positive grade reconciliation to date on the ATO1 deposit. Um, we don't have enough uh, information. I think the resource update that when we when we do have the new model out, like I said, end of this year or early next year, you're gonna get to, you're gonna see what the overall grade reconciliation looks like today. Uh, I believe both on ATO one, two, and four. So we'll see if there's some positive grade reconciliation. Are we capturing some more higher grade pockets that were missed in the original model, uh, and both from our drilling that we've, we've completed now. So um, we'll have more information on on the grade reconciliation. And, that will be uniform across uh, all deposits, both in the oxides and sulfides, I believe, in the new year. Great. So, can you uh, be, uh, are you able to comment specifically on the grades that you anticipate when steady state, or will you have to wait for the update? This is a question from Chris Thompson. Um, I, Jeremy, do you know the answer to that? I think on the oxides, you know, we don't have the firm number of what we expect on a, on a steady state. I mean, the life of mine uh, um, uh, expected grade was 1.25 grams per ton. That's when we bought the project. Now, a lot has changed. We've obviously had additional drilling. We're mining now. We're seeing that grade reconciliation. So I think we need to wait for that revised model, and then we'll know what the run rate uh, life of mine average grade will be, which should be higher than one point two. Yeah, I mean, I we've obviously got some idea, Chris. Um, you know, we we we've done not, we've done a lot of sampling. Um, you know, we're we're seeing, you know, twelve months out is probably you know one point six to one point seven, um, in the next twelve months to go with the sort of the one point nine, or so. So you know, probably if you take an average of those two, over the first couple of years, be around one point one point eight something like that. But that's you know, I think. What we've found with this deposit is, you know, we, um, you know, we, we, we certainly know a lot more when we mine it. So, uh, you know, we'll have better data as we as we go. But that, that, that's what we're seeing in the in the mine plan for 2021. Great, thank you for that. Um, here's another question from Chris. Uh, it talks a little bit about expenses. Chris is asking, what additional sustaining expenses do you anticipate over the next six to 12 months? Um, sustaining. I mean, I think we're, we're seeing, I think, as you will see from the, from the table, we see sustaining capital running in around three, 300, 350 a quarter. You know, we don't, we have no reason to expect that won't go up or down too much. Um, you know, we, we don't see, you know, we had some, we had some catch up expenses in Q2 and Q3. You know, we actually expect, expect expenses to go down a little bit going forward. Um, versus the uh, the run rate in that first sort of six months of ramp up, um, but uh, you know nothing. You know we've 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 finished the construction of the leach pad. You know the 2021 the, the numbers you'll you should see the 2021 you should see costs coming down a little bit. I would think um, on a, on a sustain you know a sustaining cost basis. 
Um, what you will start to see, though, is we'll start, we'll start to look at uh, long lead items for phase two. We, we are looking at potentially a fixed crusher and, um, and, and some other items uh, as we look at the, uh, the, power, the power solution. You know, power solution will be sort of 15 to 20 percent of our capex and then start to look at you know, capital equipment, which we think is around 30 to 40 percent of total capex on phase two. So um, you'll start to see sort of some of that phase two expenses, expenses come through. Obviously, we were, we've got consultants working for us on phase two and some of those expenses will start to, to flow into, uh, into Q1 as well. Uh, less, less, I wouldn't call them sustaining expenses, but, um, you know, we, we're, we're pretty comfortable that, it, you know, uh, as, as I say, over the life of mine, we're, we're going to be around around 550 and, and around 650 respectively on cash cost and all in sustaining in that oxide phase. Great, thank you very much. Uh, the next question is from Terence. Um, your tax rate is going to go up starting next year. So what will be the tax rate and the cash taxes versus accounting taxes and deferred taxes? Um, we've got a little bit of a deferred tax asset on the balance sheet. If you've looked at that, um, you know, corporate tax rate in Mongolia is 25%. Um, there aren't a huge amount of timing differences. So we don't expect, uh, you know, our cash taxes to be materially different from, from that. Uh, we will have some, you know, we will have some tax shield, but it's, it's not that significant. Um, you know, maybe bring that down to an effective tax rate of maybe 21, 22%, but. That would be our expectations for uh, 2021 and, and and beyond. We are Thank looking you. at indirect taxes uh, and and ways of uh, ways of uh, mitigating indirect taxes, um, tricky taxes relating to our uh, our build out of uh, phase two. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy, you may have uh, mentioned the tax benefit. Um, can you explain a little bit what the tax benefit means and where it's shown in the cash flow? Is it uh, tax paid that will get back or will it not be paid? Can you just uh, explain that a little bit more for us? Yeah, so that, well, yeah, so that in the tax assets, it's it's minimal. Um, but but the, the, the tax benefit in 2020 is, is, a, is an exemption. We don't pay tax. And, on Mongolian profits in, in 2020. So um, that's a that's that's not an accrual. It's just a it's just a it's a it's a non-payment, if you will. So, so that's why there's no that's why there's no uh, there's no tax expense in, in the in the financials. Uh, but that that obviously will change in 2021. Right. Uh, here's the next question. Uh, Arun is asking, can you finance stage two with the uh, cash flow and minimize the illusion? And what kind of pre-work of stage two can already be built? Um, so phase two, um, we're, we're working right now on a sort of a plus or minus 100 million US. Um, we'll use project finance to, to assist with that. And you can usually get 70-30 split on that, 70% um, debt, 30% equity. So if, if we need 30 million US, just rough numbers, then we, yeah, we certainly we expect to have that, you know, well within our reach you know, on our balance sheet. We have 37 million US in cash uh, and, we, and we're generating positive cash flow over the next, uh, you know, three, three quarters before we need to, you know, start spending that. So we, we, we expect we'll, you know, we don't, we don't expect we'll need to raise equity to, to fund our own uh, equity portion, that 30% portion. Um, but obviously, you know, we haven't got the feasibility study in hand, but we are working through that and we, you know, we feel reasonably comfortable that we won't, won't need to raise equity. Uh, having said that, you know, we'll, you know, we, we are in the position of, of having a strong balance sheet, um, and transition from having a sort of a not very strong balance sheet to a very strong balance sheet. And we want to continue to, uh, to ensure that we have, you know, a, a very meaningful cash cushion, uh, at all times. Harry asks, um, will you commit to no further capital raises to fund phase two? And if any, will you commit to raising funding through a capital raise available to all shareholders? Uh, can you indicate with what amount of cash you model to have available barring any additional funding um, end of 2022? 
um, any sort of modeling for 2022 is a little bit um, difficult, but, you know, we, um, you know, we, we certainly, I think, as, as I mentioned, I, I think we, we, we want to maintain cash, you know, a, a healthy cash cushion. Um, you know, that's, that's just smart business. So, you know, I, I wouldn't, um, you know, I wouldn't say anything more than that. And Neil, did you want to comment on that or Bartha? Yeah, well, uh, I think, um, you know, by the end of Q2 next year, when we, when we, when we hope to really start the expansion, um, I think, you know, your cash balance will, will increase, you know, our target is hopefully to have from cash flow the next three quarters, essentially, you know, another, another 15 to 20 million on the balance sheet. Uh, Jeremy, is that a, a, a good forecast or assumption? I think we're, we're targeting. We're going we're gonna to have we're going to have capital items, so I, I would be at the lower end of that. But you know, we yeah, you know, we uh, yeah. So the, so the good thing is the cash flow will continue over the build. So by that by the time we get to end of twenty twenty two, you still have another year of production that's ongoing from the oxides with also the debt funding that's in place. Um, so, you know, I think needs to say that the, there'll be a, a healthy cash balance by the end of 2022 half, after already completing construction. Uh, our goal is to not have to raise any equity. We are funded, self-funded on the equity component of this, of this buildup. So uh, we don't need to raise any equity to expand, only debt. So uh, if there are investors, uh, like Carrie's asking, uh, who want to look at the debt tranche with our syndicate of, of debt providers, we're... We're certainly we'll open it up to them on the same terms. Uh, uh, we've always, uh, you know, besides the the one and only investment with Eric Sprott, opened up our other rounds to all our supporters. So any investors will always have the chance to to come into a placement should we ever do one. Um, uh, but at these levels where our share price is trading today, there's no need to raise any equity given our increased cash balance from quarter to quarter going forward. Uh, we we don't need to dilute these levels anymore. Okay, so if we take a step back and not just looking at the finances, looking at all aspects of the project, what do you think is the biggest challenge to getting phase two done? I think the I think the procurement could be the biggest challenge. Like that's something we can't control. If COVID worsens, restrictions worsen, that could be a delay. That could be a delay in in, in procuring those longer lead items and critical items that uh, we can't control, um, my guess. Um, Jeremy, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you know, there are, you know, there's always things uh, that outside our control. I mean, like procurement is one, I think, you know, getting the power, getting the power solution in, in place obviously is important, um, but we think we have enough time to do that. Um, you know, we don't think raising the capital is going to be, you know, a delay. Having said that, you know, clearly, you know, getting, Getting people decide to do due diligence may may may, may delay things. Um, you know, we are obviously have to get we have to get materials in and out of the country for sampling and so on for this feasibility study and and um, you know, but um, you know, we, we've tried to build in some you know some cushions into our timelines and you know we you know we are we are doing everything we can to uh, you know to run our project finance in parallel with the feasibility study and the power work. Um, um, we we, are, we have the benefit of. You know, again, we have we have an operating mine. We have an operating facility in this location, so that's a huge advantage in terms of um, having something to show people. Um, you know, cash flow ongoing. You know, it's a huge advantage uh, rather than just sort of starting a mine from scratch in a greenfield location with all the infrastructure issues. You know, we've already, uh, and as Butter mentioned, we already this is a fully permitted project. We already have the permits for the for an eleven year mine life. And, um, you know, so we have, uh, you know, we, we've really broken the back of this. Uh, and that's people, some people, I think, don't actually understand is that, you know, we've, that this is an 11 year project that we have, you know, we are sort of a year into. And, and that's how the Mongolian government sees this project. They see it as an 11 year project. That, that was what the permits were granted for. And, um, and uh, that, that's really important. Um, you know, things can go wrong. And you know, we'll obviously try to, to manage that. But as, as, as Butter says, we've managed to uh, to operate in a very tough environment. Uh, we, we also benefit from the fact we don't actually export anything. All of our product goes in a Brinks truck every two weeks to the to the to the banks, and uh, we get paid the same day. So you know, it's a you know, a, 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 it's a simple business. And I think it's important to note that we do have the luxury of that 
production of the oxides extending. It's, it's not just two years of mining life remaining on the oxide. So if there is a delay, if there is uh, things take longer, um, you can continue to produce on the oxides and still generate cash and, and grow our business in other ways or, or continue to build a cash position while we're waiting for the phase two to come online. So uh, I think having a nice buffer of a couple more years past 2022 on the oxides alone is a nice thing to have. So there's no immediate, uh, you don't miss out on any cash flow if you miss a window and there's a six month delay or even longer, uh, like there was at the beginning when we were building our first mine, we only had a limited amount of capital and any delays, obviously you risk the dilution and, and everything else. So it's a much different situation and it's a nice buffer to have uh, versus, uh, I guess, phase one. All right, thank you very much. Um, I think we only have time for one last question. So let's close off with this. Um, what else can investors uh, anticipate to hear from Step Gold uh, by the end of the year, by December 31st, or even through to the new year in Q1 2021, besides the feasibility study results? Who would like to take that? So what else to look forward to in 2021 besides the resource update, besides the feasibility study, besides the expiration on the UK project that's never been drilled? Um, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I guess um, other opportunities in country, um, you know, not something we can't control. We can't control the pricing. We can't control the, the negotiations, but uh, maybe maybe bulking up in addition to the I think a strong pipeline that we have uh, that we can organically grow uh, and as I see a question here about not raising equity try not to raise equity to fund our own growth I think we're gonna work on that basis and continue to generate cash flow uh, and use that to grow our business and hopefully maybe that equates to maybe some M&A opportunities in country as well that uh, people you know, we can't control but we're hoping for. Anybody else? All right. Then I think that uh, is all the time we have today for questions. Uh, Neil, I'll hand it back off to you to uh, close things off. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks, Jane. And, and thank you, everyone, again, for taking the time uh, for the update. I know there's questions here that we still haven't answered. So, uh, again, we're all accessible directly. Uh, please reach out. You can email us. Uh, we can set up a call one-on-one -on -one and happy to run through any other questions you guys have. Um, we do this on a daily basis with our investors, and uh, we, are, we are more than happy to uh, speak to any other questions that we can answer on this call. Please reach out any time. Uh, as, as we've highlighted here, we obviously have a lot of milestones, catalysts ahead of us. We're really just getting started. So uh, please keep an eye and reach out any time. All right, and stick around, everyone. There's a survey after the close of this webinar. You can leave your details so that the Step Gold team can reach out and follow up with you directly to answer all of your questions. Uh, that's it for now. Until next time, thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.